Oh, still the same old me. My heart's aching. It's hard for me to breathe. I'm, and I'm just messed up inside. Your pulse is a little faster than normal. So you need to rest. Don't move around. What are my specific conditions? You have pneumitis and pericardia. No! How bad is it? Can you explain more? Pneumonitis is an inflammation of the lung tissue. This would explain your breathing difficulties as well as the slight coughing. We believe that you have obtained this condition due to exposure to asbestos. Your occupation as a construction worker may have led to this exposure. Pericarditis is the inflammation of the lining of the heart. This explains the pain in your chest. Pericarditis is often acute, but it could become chronic. So far, we, have, we believe it is in the acute form for you. This could heal in itself in less than a few weeks, but medication is available as well. Very correct. You are not in need of surgery. I'm expecting you to stay here at the hospital for a few days to a week more. Michael remains stable for the rest of the night. In the morning, Dr. Rodney, Roshni, Salja, and Pooja meet together to explain the occurrence. What was the cause of sudden seizure and the heart stop? I think it was a cause of a chronic case of pericarditis. Or maybe it was due to thrombophlebitis. The thrombus could have easily rubbed up into his heart. Both are good theories as to why our patient went into sudden cardiac arrest but I am less certain of the thrombophlebitis. Of course, we will need a Doppler ultrasonography or a venography done to check for any blood clots. In addition, I want an electrocardiography done to check for any abnormal cardiac rhythms as a, as a result of his attack. Let's check on his history and the last physical to see if any abnormal, abnormalities appeared. Well, according to my nurse's notes, most of his last vital signs are normal. His temperature was exactly 97.8 degrees Fahrenheit. His pulse was a bit abnormal, but his respiratory rate was not abnormal. The only concern I had was that his blood pressure was a bit higher than it should have been. But I changed his diet to prevent this to escalate any higher. If I recall correctly, family history showed hypertension and a propensity to heart failure, especially in the men. Um. Yes, this was the case. Family history shows that the age of these problems started around the age 35. And I could show our patient. The patient is 36 years old. So this is the most likely cause for a patient's cardiac arrest. In addition to his pericarditis and pneumonitis, Mike is in no position to go home. He should see a cardiopulmonologist as soon as his results come in. If a thrombus was the reason, in addition to his hypertensive history in the patient's family, the muscle might have torn in his heart. We need to check for heart damage. All valid points. I think we should send him to the cardiopulmonologist and then analyze the consultation reports for further treatment. In the meantime, I'll explain to our patient what is going to happen. So, Mike, how are you feeling as of now? Oh, well, after my heart attack, I'll think that, that helps a lot. You're my job. <laughs> so this is what they pay you for? Anyway, so well after my heart attack yesterday, I still feel chest pain and I still have difficulty breathing. In addition, I feel a pull in my heart. 
What caused my emergency? We aren't exactly sure, but we are leaning towards high blood pressure, in, in addition to your family's past with heart conditions. It seems like your blood pressure is still high, meaning you have hypertension. I'm going to talk to your doctor's son now about getting you on a calcium channel blocker drug, such as diltiazem. Oh, what will that do? What are the side effects? The medication will cause the heart to beat less forcefully and less often. Side effects include fainting, headaches, and rapid weight gain. What about my pericytitis and the pneumonitis? How will I be treated for those? We are thinking about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as antibiotics. Mm. However, we are sending you to a specialist having, and having several tests done to see exactly what went wrong, how to treat it, and what will be the best way for you to live about your life after you are discharged. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Mike. Hello, Ronnie. I'm Dr. Ronnie. Do you have any questions? Well, what specialist will I see tomorrow? They're going to a cardiopulmonologist who specializes in the cardiac and pulmonary systems. This includes your heart and your lungs, which are the main concerns as of now for your health. He or she will take tests and further pinpoint what your exact problem is. I see. I hope this will make me feel better. I can't wait to get out of this place. Yeah, we can't either. No offense, but the fewer patients you have, the healthier the world is.